In 2016, I started working on this skit video about a Lolita who quits the fashion, and I used tropes of things I had seen from Lolitas who had left. However, my video idea was a bit grandiose and I didn't have the resources to finish it. But the idea behind it continues to haunt me. Why do Lolitas quit? If you've been involved in the Lolita community for, I'd say, any time over a year, you've probably seen someone make a post about quitting Lolita or leaving Lolita, or maybe you've heard someone talk about it, or you've seen sales posts that have tags all over it saying, leaving Lolita, quitting Lolita. For those of you who watch my videos and may not be involved with the Lolita community or wear the fashion yourself, this is a strange reoccurring phenomenon that's been happening for years. I have talked to a lot of other members of different J fashion communities, LARPers, furries, toy collectors, doll collectors, specifically LARPers, historical reenactors, cosplayers, and none of these communities seem to have a similar ritual to leaving and quitting. And I don't know what else to call it besides a ritual because that's what it feels like to me. The only kind of similar concept that I can sort of relate it to would be in idol culture, the whole system of graduating where a member will graduate from a group which means that they are leaving and it's sort of made into a big public thing, <laughs> which isn't really the same because it's not always up to the idols to make that decision. There's also like management involved, but it's the only thing that I can think of where it's this big statement of leaving something. My point and objective to this video is not to say that quitting Lolita or leaving Lolita is always bad. I want to explore different reasons why a Lolita may quit or leave the fashion and community and work towards ways that we can make the community a more compassionate place. Before we go any further, I just want to say that I don't speak on behalf of the entire Lolita community. Everything on my YouTube channel is based on my own personal thoughts and experiences as a Lolita, but just coming from me, lore, and not every single Lolita is going to agree with me and that's okay. I also want to mention that I don't want you to take your entire perception of Lolita fashion and the community from just my channel alone. I think that you should take in a lot of Lolita fashion content from different Lolita YouTubers and bloggers and TikTokers and podcasts and in-person communities and online communities and take all of that media, all of that content, all of those people, groups, ideas and make your own decisions about it. What do I mean by quitting or leaving Lolita? What I'm referring to is when Lolitas make posts or announcements or videos or any sort of large statement that they are quitting and leaving the fashion or community. There is a whole bunch of reasons of why this may happen. I'm going to try to break it down into four different categories based off of things that I've witnessed and seen and also things that people have told me. Please remember these are not facts, these are just generalizations made by me. And people may have quit for entirely different reasons as well. The best scenario in which a Lolita decides to leave is just that they simply got tired of it or grew out of it. A lot of the times when this happens, someone finds another interest or hobby that they want to invest their time and money in. That person has something that they want to prioritize more than Lolita fashion, which for a long time didn't make any sense to me because I've always put Lolita fashion as one of my highest priorities. I know that in the past I have sat down with Lolitas who have decided to leave Lolita because they're tired of it. It, and I've tried to convince them that they still love it and that it's still important to them, which I realize is really stupid and wrong. I should have just listened to them and not tried to convince them otherwise. It really clicked for me in 2015 when a Lolita who was a member of a community that I'm a part of decided to sell their entire wardrobe because they would rather pursue ball jointed dolls and that's where they really wanted to put their money and their time into collecting and they were a teenager. And to me, for some reason, them being a teenager, it made sense. I was like, oh, Lolita was just a phase for them. So they're moving out of that phase and into this next phase. But that's not a trait that's specific to only teenagers. People's interests and priorities change all the time throughout your life. I think that if someone isn't as committed to Lolita fashion as they once were, and they want to leave because they want to pursue something else or they're just tired of it, 
I think we should support that and just let them know that they're always welcome to come back. Another scenario which is more difficult is that a Lolita may be forced to leave because of a financial struggle. Lolita dresses obviously are not essential items, they are things that are an investment and generally you can sell and make money from them pretty quickly. There was a time when I regularly had to sell two or three dresses every couple of months just to keep up with the cost of living. I'm very fortunate that I've never had to sell my entire wardrobe, but I do have friends who have, and it's really difficult. If you see a post or a friend of yours is going through this, please be supportive of them. Even if you can't support them financially, it could help by sharing their for sales posts, seeing if communities that you're involved with, if anyone in them is looking for those specific items, even just sending that person a message and expressing that you know it must be difficult and that you are there for them emotionally can be really helpful. It's also good to let them know that if they ever are in a more stable, secure place in the future that you can help them recollect those pieces if they ever want or find other pieces. Sometimes that can be really reassuring. Lolitas who have been burned by toxicity in the community. Now I'm going to come back to this one because this is the one that I really want to explore. And then there's people who have been banned. And if you've been banned from the Lolita community, most likely you've done something that caused other Lolitas to feel unsafe. And in this scenario, you just have to accept the consequences. I don't doubt that there are probably people who have been wrongfully banned from the Lolita community, but in my 10 years of making videos, <laughs> and my 10 plus years in different communities, I've only ever gotten one complaint of somebody who said that they were wrongfully banned. But it turns out that they were lying to me and trying to manipulate me for my audience, but that's the subject of a horror story if I ever feel comfortable revisiting that series, so subscribe for that one. Anyways, my point being that people generally aren't wrongfully banned. Communities have moderators and committees of moderators in place with a lot of rules and restrictions around banning people, and they make their efforts just to have a safe space for everyone. Let's go back to the leaders who have left the community because they feel that they've been burned by it. And I just want to say that if you have gone through this, you are completely valid. It's an extremely hard thing to go through. The internet can be an especially horrible place. And I feel like with my channel, I try to really counter that by creating this safe, positive, happy space, this escapism, cute, wonderful channel. However, I often worry that I go into toxic positivity territory because I want to address that there is really harmful shit out there. I'm just trying to create some sort of escape from it. And I want to address it because I don't want you to think if all you see is happy, positive, everything's wonderful, you might feel like when you experience that bad thing, like you're not valid and you completely are. If you are hurt by Lolita's online, the Lolita community, it doesn't make you weak. I don't see someone making this leaving Lolita post, complaining about how horrible the community is, and see it as like, oh, that person just couldn't handle the community, or oh, that person couldn't handle the internet. No, the way I see it is that the Lolita community has failed this person. If you've quit because of insider bullying or over criticism or hate, that's a failure on the community. The community's whole purpose is to bring people together and support one another. Now, for those of you just hate watching this video, ready to tear me and this video apart on different drama forums, I don't think that I'm necessarily going to reach or change you. There have been movements throughout the Lolita community to try to end online bullying, and they haven't been successful because I don't think that it's ever going to fully go away. But what we can do is try to not inadvertently add to it and support Lolitas who are dealing with online backlash and criticism. While filming my concrete video, I asked viewers to submit times that they had received concrete that wasn't actually concrete and may have even been harmful. Without mentioning quitting at all, I actually got a lot of emails from people who had quit because of this. I think that when I talk about these topics, I generalize them in a big way. For example, I know that fat phobia is a problem in Lolita. I know that racism is a problem in the Lolita community. I know that transphobia and ableism are problems in the Lolita community. And I talk about it like this big thing because it affects a lot of Lolitas. And 
reading about incidents of this on an individual basis and seeing so many examples of it was extremely difficult and it feels bad because I'm part of this community that's done this to people and I think that everyone in the Lyric community kind of needs to acknowledge that and also realize that this is hurting people. I think that all I can do is bring attention to these behaviors and take responsibility myself and encourage people to take responsibility themselves for their actions and the things that they say. Most of the emails that I received, the senders asked to remain anonymous and I don't feel comfortable sharing other people's stories. But all I ask is when a Lolita talks about experiencing racism, transphobia, fat phobia, ableism, or any sort of discrimination in the Lolita community that we listen to them and take them seriously. If you see a post with a discriminating comment, report it to a moderator, even if it's not your post, and help support the person who is receiving that discrimination. Something that really stood out from those emails and that I've also witnessed myself is that one or two harmful comments can often escalate into this huge snowball and storm that can be really damaging. I think that one way we can help prevent this is by reading previous comments on a post. It's something that is pretty simple and will help the original poster as well as make you the commenter look better. If someone gives advice on a coordinate and says that the poster needs to change the blouse and your advice is the exact same thing, you don't have to repeat it. If it's on Facebook, for example, you can just like that person's comment. And if you have something to add, like you have a blouse suggestion, just add it underneath that one. Because when people just comment repeatedly over and over, you should change the blouse. You need to wear a different blouse. That blouse doesn't work. You should wear a different top with this coordinate. Not only is that overwhelming to the original poster, but it also makes you look stupid. Like, yeah, we get it. They need to change the blouse. But do you have anything to add to that? I want to take a moment to acknowledge the work of moderators because it is an absolutely thankless job, but it is so important in the leader community. I have seen certain posts kind of spiral out of control before a moderator gets involved. But it's hard to demand moderators actions and attentions when it's a volunteer position. I think that partially moderators should maybe reconvene and find more things that they have no tolerance for in terms of discrimination. I think that one way you can help is if you have a lot of knowledge on the Lita fashion community, a lot of experience, and you have good reading skills, and you are patient, volunteer to be a moderator because the more moderators, the better. The more chances of people being online at certain times, the better. Having more people help is only going to make things better. <laughs> I want to address the seagull in the room that is CGL. If you are unaware, CGL is a board on 4chan where lolitas go and post things anonymously. Way back when, it used to be sort of a good resource because there was written tutorials and advice on there. But anytime that there is a faceless forum, of course there's also going to be horrible, terrible things because there is no consequences. In this year, 2021, moving forward, there is absolutely no reason for you to have to get information from CGL. There are over 100 Lolita YouTubers. There's more than 100 Lolita YouTubers. And yes, not all of them are active, but even if they're inactive, all of their past content is just archived information. There are countless numbers of blogs everywhere. There are Lolitas on TikTok and Instagram making information rapidly available. There are Lolita podcasts. There are Lolita books. It's really not worth it to go on to CGL because the risk of being hurt is too high. Especially for people with anxiety and depression, you feel these bad things about yourself already and then you go to CGL and you see bad things about other people or yourself and it's just like this cycle of abuse on yourself. I mean, you also gotta remember that a lot of the times people on CGL have like 
vendettas with the looted community. Maybe they've been banned. Maybe people have been mean to them and now they're just continuing this cycle. Maybe they quit Lolita years ago. Maybe they're not comfortable to actually wear Lolita so they're gonna tear down others because they don't feel good. It's a whole thing. I feel like I could make an entire video on it, but I don't think that I need to because you just don't need it. Just don't. Just don't. <laughs> Go there. Don't read it. You don't need it. There is so much information out there for you in other places. Let me tell you, I'm talking about this like I have it all figured out and I don't. Sometimes I feel like the CEO of being ridiculed on the internet. I can't tell you how many times I have wanted to quit Lolita Fashion. I've wanted to quit the community. I've wanted to stop making videos about it. And I haven't because for as much as I've talked about the harm in the community, there's overwhelmingly a lot of good. That's what I try to focus my content on 98% of the time, but I feel like I can't celebrate all of the good things without trying to acknowledge the bad and try to fix them. Lolita fashion has affected my life in so many positive ways. It has introduced me to people I never would have met otherwise and that are so important to me. It's given me so many incredible experiences and memories and I've heard so many stories from so many different people about how it has given them more confidence, it's helped made them feel beautiful, and made great strengths in self-discovery. That's why I continue to be involved and support it. I may quit and leave one day, but I want to wait until I'm ready and fully done with it on my own terms and not influenced by anyone else or in reaction to anything. And I hope that you do the same. If you are considering leaving Lolita Fashion, my biggest piece of advice is try not to burn your bridges. I have seen so many posts of people all over Lolita saying how worthless it is, how much they hate it, and then a few months later making a want to buy post and everyone's like, weren't you just... <laughs> now I understand if part of your process of recovery is to lash out at the people who've hurt you in the face of harassment and stand up for yourself, but I guess in the future if you do come back and you have made some sort of awful post to just explain that the reason you made it was because you were hurt and if you see someone's post on a lolita community and they're just all over it and saying horrible terrible things consider that maybe they're really hurt and that person needs help and guidance and support believe it or not i personally don't get my sense of community from the internet i get my sense of community from in-person events and I understand that the last year has been hard without those. Trust me, I know firsthand. I suggest for anyone who wants to leave Lolita to first do like a temporary trial, leave all of the online forums, leave the Facebook groups, leave your communities, step away from it, put all of your Lolita in bins and maybe set a date to come back to it and see how you're feeling. Because you want to see if you want to leave and quit for yourself and make sure that it's not just a reaction to something else. Personally, I also would wait until you can go to in-person events again before making that decision, but that's again just what I would do. What's the moral of this story? Be civil and considerate to one another. If a Lolita decides that they're over the fashion, they're over the community, respect their decision to leave. If you want the Lolita community to be a better place, be willing to listen to others even when it's difficult. Self-moderate and make sure that you aren't inadvertently contributing to something that's going to make someone feel unwelcome. It's also okay if you don't want to be part of the community, you can totally wear the fashion on your own in your own way. A lot of Lolitas tend to join the community to meet people and then they make their friends and then they sort of stop being involved and just wear Lolita on their own and with their friends and that's okay too. I deleted my Facebook. I left all online Lolita groups and communities because I just had to put in these boundaries for myself because Lolita fashion and YouTube is my job and I just needed those boundaries and it worked out great for me. I know it won't work out for everybody, but um, if you want to do that, you can. I'm just waiting for the time when we can see each other in person again and I'm trying to keep up with the community through friends. And also YouTubers, 
TikTokers, blogs, all the things that I mentioned before. Most of all, practice empathy. I think that's the absolute biggest takeaway from this. Making this video has taken a lot out of me. I promise that my next video will be fun and lighthearted and I will be addressing some more heavy topics like these ones in the future. If you have any recommendations or requests for videos that you would like me to try to create, topics that you would like me to try to cover, please email me lovelylortopics at gmail.com. I've also been using TikTok more regularly and answering questions in the most dramatic ways possible. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video and would like to show your support in a monetary form, I have a Patreon as well as a tip jar. And if you can't contribute to those, that's totally fine. You can also show your support by subscribing, liking this video, and watching my other videos. Now I'm off to go put batteries into 23 Tamagotchis and you'll see why in my next video. <laughs>